Hello and welcome. This is Greg Justice from Scripter Publishing Group, and I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, now, you know uh, you've made it when you are recognized by just your first name, and that is the case with my guest today. Uh, Gilad is one of the world's most popular fitness personalities. He is an absolute pioneer in the fitness industry. He's helped millions of people around the world stay fit with his very popular TV show, Bodies in Motion, and Gilad was inducted into the National Fitness Hall of Fame in 2007. So Gilad, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about the legacy of Jack LaLanne. Thank you, the honor is all mine, as you know. Well, very good. Well, I like to start these interviews with taking you back in time to the very first time you met Jack face to face, what that experience was like and how it impacted you in your career and your life. Absolutely. Um, back in 1981 for me, when I first got to Hawaii, uh, there was some friends of mine and myself, we, we talked about possibly uh, starting some type of a local fitness show it was a far-fetched dream that we sort of uh, thought, well, if we'll be able to pull this off the ground, it'll be really something else. But we really thought only of a local small market, Hawaii, which, you know, it is a small market. One of the ideas was, uh, why don't we go out to L.A. and apply to the Jack LaLanne show and see if, because it, he was still filming his show back then and see if he would be kind enough to have me. I've had a fairly decent reputation as a fitness instructor in, in Los Angeles and in Hawaii. And uh, the idea was to have, uh, get on his show so I could get some exposure mm -hmm. and see what it's like to be on a television because I've never done television before. I've never even had a second of TV before that. <laughs> So we contacted the Jack O'Lane show and uh, they actually said, yes, please come by. If you can come to L.A., uh, we will have you as a guest on the show. So I collected uh, my, my last few dimes and decided to go to Los Angeles back in, I, I think it was 1982 uh, that we did that, beginning of 82. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went, of course, to the studios and Jack met me in person. I did a little segment on his show, and one of the things I still remember today that he told me, he says, listen, young man, he says, you're going to have your own show someday. And he didn't even know that I was planning on, you know, doing that or had the idea of doing it or anything of that sort. And uh, I just found that because, you know, Jack Lane, we all, back in the day, there were no, uh, there were no big fitness, everything was Jack LaLanne, right. European health spas and, and all that. There were not, not like what it is today. So Jack LaLanne's name carried a big weight. And, you know, just the, the, the fact that I got to meet him and Elaine, I met Elaine as well at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was just thrilled. I said, wow, this is really great. And this guy, you know, who's a legend, <laughs> really liked what I did. And we kind of exercised together on the show. And I came back uh, to Hawaii with a backpack full of inspiration uh, from the man himself, from the legend himself. So wow. that's kind of said. I said, wow, you know, if, if a guy like Jack really, uh, you know, thought I could do something with, with, with fitness, then I, uh, you know, it, it gave me a lot of inspiration. Right. Let's put it and, that way. And that was 1982, right? 1982. And then your show, because his show ended in 1984, I believe. Is that correct? I think, I think, I'm not sure what the last year of the show, but I believe I was one before the last year of his show. Okay. So I think they taped until 1983. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, it might be 84. And your show began uh, what year? Mine began in 1983 in Hawaii in March. That's what I thought. Okay. And so now you bypassed Jack's longest running fitness television show uh, what a couple years ago i think so because i think i think his run uh on the show on the jack the lane show was for 33 years if I i'm not mistaken so. i believe so okay and yeah. mine is currently 36 years on air wow 36 years think about that folks 36 years that's the longest running fitness show in the history yes. 
of television. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Yes. And it yes. started on ESPN. It started on ESPN. Well, so we started as a local show in right. Hawaii. Okay. Uh, and slowly we kind of, you know, because we, we took the concept of shooting outdoors. Right. Beautiful setting. Okay. And that, that kind of hit a chord. And I was able to, uh, to get a few different uh, markets throughout the U.S. Uh, in Texas, in Reno, Nevada, in, in Southern California, in, uh, in Vegas. We had a few stations that picked back then. It was, you know, stations that were affiliates. So they picked right. up the show. Right. Um, anyways, interestingly enough, uh, ESPN picked us up in 85 and, you know, it's okay. history from there. Yeah. But uh, the interesting thing about Jack is that in 1994, from a 1995 season, I thought I was already, uh, let's say, that was like, I've been 10 years on ESPN by that time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wouldn't that be a really great, I, I, I saw something about Jack, you know, because I was on his show and basically lost contact. I wasn't in contact with him for all these years. Uh, but then in 1995, uh, you know, 14, 13, 14 years later, I figured, why don't I do for my next season on ESPN? I heard that Jack Elaine was turning 80. Yeah. And he was towing boats and ships and planes, whatever he was towing. Uh, and I figured, what a great idea and what an honor it would be if he would come to Hawaii to be on my show. Yes. So we made the contact. Uh, long story short, him and Elaine, they came to shoot my show. Mm -hmm. Turn out it was the last year we were on ESPN. Okay. After that, we went on to Fox and to Discovery Health and all that. But uh, so we got, I got to shoot five shows with Jack and Elaine in Hawaii. He That's turned 80, cool. I turned 40. So that was kind of like, a, like a, nice, uh, a nice date for the both of us. And from that point on, there was a friendship that sort of develops over the years. I got to see him quite a few times uh, through some other mutual friends that kind of, you know, got the, got the, got it the friendship tighter yes. and got to see him on some birthday parties of his, uh, his late eighties and the nineties, etc. cetera. Uh, and pretty much was, uh, followed him and was in touch with them pretty much all the way till, uh, till he passed away. Yes. Well, yeah. and I don't think it's any secret that you were always one of Jack's very favorite fitness friends. And yes. so it's extra special that you're here talking with us today about his yeah. legacy. So yeah, that, somehow, somehow he, <laughs> somehow he took a liking to my stuff. You yes, know, I he, call really, it my he stuff really did. No, my, he, my form. I mean, I, I developed a certain style and a certain form, and he really, he really liked it. He did. You know, his, his was more calisthenics. Mm -hmm. yep. Mine was more, you know, a little. I, I, I incorporated dance, and I've incorporated uh, aerobics, and a little bit. It was a little bit more. Uh, Different style, yeah. You know, well, and um, you had a beautiful background. Yes, yes. The ocean and the, the sky, and and no, it was yeah, no, that that was spectacular. And I do remember the shows with Jack and Elaine on there with you, and that was a very, I mean, that was so cool to see that. Yes, uh, it's still on my website. You know, I, I yes. have it. Uh, I have these little uh, vignettes that I do with him as an yes. opening to the show. We kind of. Talk about a couple of, you know, fitness subjects, diet subjects. Uh, right. We talk about how to inspire people. Just short little clips, 30 second, 40 second long at the beginning of the show. And what is, what is your website so people can find that? Uh, fitwithgilad.com. Fitwithgilad.com. And that's G-I-L-A-D. So Correct. people, you can go over there and check that out. So yes. let's roll right into the, the next topic. You told us about your first meeting with Jack. Do you have a favorite story or memory uh, of Jack LaLanne, something that really stuck with you and resonated with you beyond that very first meeting? Yes. Well, besides all the good stuff, which is, you know, there's plenty of, <laughs> right, right. Plenty of fine uh, memories there. Mm -hmm. But the one, the one fun memory I had was on the shoot that he did with me uh -huh. uh, in Hawaii. Because understand, he was 80 at the time. Uh, I was 40. And I wanted to incorporate him in a way that made him look as best as I could make him look on the show. Because he wasn't familiar with my routines. Right. So we said to him when he came to Hawaii, he shot five shows with me. 
-hmm. I said, why don't I use you, Jack, in the warm up, and then we'll use you during the strength segment because then you can show us, you know, push ups and sit ups and squats and things that you know and you're familiar with, and it's fun for you to do. Right. And you won't have to do the dance part with me on the cardio and the aerobics, all right? Well, I end up, after every show, I go into the truck, and I sit there with the director, and I look at the show, and we discuss, okay, this was good, this was bad, should we shoot this again, should not? And Jack is, with this is after the first show we did, and he's on headset, and I'm on headset inside the truck, and I hear him say to Elaine, I want to get the hell out of here. This guy isn't using me in any of the shows. He's not giving me exposure. He's not using me. He's only using me in the warm up. He's only using me in the push ups. I, I, I want to get out of here. And Elaine says to him, Jack, relax. He's doing fine. You're doing great. He's using you where you're strong. He knows what he's doing. Calm down. And then I come out of the truck because I got concerned. I wanted to talk to him. And he was sitting like, you know, 30 feet away from the production truck under an umbrella with Elaine. And as soon as I show up, he goes, hey, Gilad, how are you doing? I said, Jack, are you having a good time on the show? And he goes, oh, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's those hot mics that get you every time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a funny story. I love that. That is so funny. Well, well let me ask you this as we transition to the, the legacy phase of the interview. In your opinion, when, when you think about Jack LaLanne, what do you feel like his legacy is, not just inside the industry, the fitness industry, but the industry and beyond that to the world? What is Jack LaLanne's well, legacy? Yes, I think that besides, uh, you know, besides the, the, the legacy that he left with fitness with his name in fitness with the, with the fitness studios and, and and clubs that he developed and the, all the different products that we're all familiar with all the way down to the jack lalane juicer mm -hmm. but i think that the, for, to me as, as a fitness person who's involved with the public and you know the main thing is the encouragement that he gave to the average joe uh at home through his tv show through his personality uh, he was the type of guy that anybody could approach, anybody could come up to. I sat with him several times at a restaurant, and the cook would hear Jack Lane's here in the house, and he would come out, and Jack would be to him just like he was family, right. and to the waiter, and to the busboy, and to everybody else. And he really, the people really admired him, and he really had this, uh, this very, very special uh, way with people to motivate them, to talk to them about fitness in a very simple way, you know, not about uh, anatomy and things like that. He just yeah. talked to them straight to the face, straight to the eye. And uh, from that perspective, to me, that's where he was really a legend because that's what people remember. That's what gravitated people to him. Yeah. Yeah. When you're able to connect on that simple level and just spread the message of fitness without, like you said, all the science terms and all that, but just to be able mm -hmm. to to get people engaged in the process. I think you're right. That's such a special gift that he had. Yes. That kind of leads to the next question. If you were to sum up Jack LaLanne in three words, what three words best describe Jack LaLanne and why? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, inspiring. One is because of his personal story, uh, that you know, uh, how he developed from a you know, sick child into a bodybuilder and, uh, and his commitment to fitness throughout his whole life, the thousands and thousands of people, millions of people that he's affected. Yeah. That's, I think you know, it's difficult to talk about Jack in this way because he, he, he basically planted the seed of fitness the way it exploded today, uh, back in the day when fitness was freaky. When, you know, very few people did it. It was only the sports people. Uh, fitness was not uh, part of our daily routine. Uh, you know, your neighbor didn't do fitness. Right. Uh, and uh, the inspiration, I think, is number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, another thing that, uh, that kind of really is, is his genuine, his genuine need and, 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 and wanting to help people 
And I think that's the second thing that I would say about Jack. And the third, his availability. And when I say availability, I mean the fact that anybody and everybody could come up to him, no matter where he was sitting at what time, and talk to him about health, fitness, and he was always available for people. Those are very good. Inspiring his genuine want to help people and his availability, that inclusiveness yeah. to bring. Yeah, he's willing, he was willing to talk to anybody, anybody right. anytime, anywhere. Yes, and that's a kind of a common theme that I've heard throughout this series of interviews is how inclusive he was for everybody and the ability to, again, connect with whether you were a professional athlete whether you were a Hollywood celebrity or just regular Joe off the street. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting because when he was shooting the shows with me, and like I said, he turned 80 at the time, mm -hmm. uh, we were at the gym and we would, he was showing some pull-ups and push-ups and he's, he had all the young kids. They all knew him. Mm -hmm. You know, kids right. in their 20s. Yeah. They, they knew exactly who he was. They, they, were, they were like amazed to see him. They were yeah. like, wow, there's Jack Malay. <laughs> Well, and that's part, that's the mission behind this project that Elaine and I are doing with the book and this series of interviews is to introduce Jack to the whole next generation of not just trainers, but to the world. So, yes, well, and it's, a, I'll tell you, it's a blessed job because today, especially in today's world, what I find today, you know, at, at my age, I mean, I'm still sort of in the middle there between, you know, young and old, right. but uh <laughs> Younger and younger, I should say. Uh, but the, the, today's world, it's, people don't know as much about what happened 20, 30 years ago. They think that the world just started today. Uh, and everything that they get is strictly through internet and through uh, social media. So, I mean, I grew up knowing about Jack DeLange. I knew about uh, Paul Bragg. I knew about uh, George Atlas. I, about Atlas. I knew about, you, you name it, I knew. Right, just because I knew <laughs> everybody knew. <laughs> now you really have to make an effort to educate, especially the younger people, because everybody is very niche. They know about their subject, but not about a lot of other subjects. And I think that what you guys are doing is awesome because it really will help. You know, uh, not to mention everything that he stands for, which is inspiration and all that other, but just the fact that to involve young people and to know a little bit about how this all developed.